Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents Podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant. Yo. As well as Chris, aka CGM. Yeah, today's been a freaking joy. And the special guest of the week. None other than Well, you guys probably know him if you're uh, at my streams regularly, but it's I am Ghost Rider 14. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I know you expressed some interest on being on the podcast, and we're like, you know what? Sure, why not? I mean, you've been supporting the channel for a really long time. Uh, before we get started, just just out, uh, out of curiosity, how did you discover the channel? Um, I think a back. I think in uh, this for short fish, we're doing a I think like a weekly prediction of the NFL games. Mm-hmm. I think it was week five or week six i decided to come and join and i've been a member since and i'm glad to be here i mean w- let's be honest where else do you get chris right yeah <laughs> <laughs> well if we do what we tell him to do and get a channel set up and start putting videos on there of his customer service calls <laughs> dude yeah me and me and sarge have been encouraging chris to start up his own youtube channel because what you guys don't see if you're listening what you don't see behind the scenes is the most hilarious stuff that you'll probably ever experience um pretty much on a, <laughs> on a monthly i want to say not a weekly basis but on a monthly basis chris will send me a two-minute <laughs> rant with him and a customer service rep and it is. It, he's just tormenting this customer service rep, trying no. to get anything for free. <laughs> no, um, that's not true. That's not absolutely true. true. <laughs> no, usually I'm getting shitty service, and I'm, and then they cop an attitude with me, like the one I sent you yesterday. That was pretty that, epic. The one you sent me yesterday. Did that? Do, did that dude not have an attitude? Who got mad first, him or me? I will, to, to Chris's benefit, I did listen to the whole two-minute uh, video, or audio, rather, of, I think it was a cable customer service, um, Time Warner, right? Cox, but go ahead. Okay. And uh, and a guy, actually, he, he copped the attitude before Chris. I was quite surprised. Um, yeah, even... He got, I was saying, I think I deserve credit for all the outages and inconvenience I had. And he goes, well, what do you want us to retroactively credit you? Yeah. So, yeah, I, so yeah, I put him in his place, didn't I? You did. And, but that's what I mean. And that's what Sarge means too. You, this needs to be on YouTube for all of us to consume. I feel selfish listening to this stuff sometimes like, wow, this yeah. is, this is gold. You know, like I can't believe I have the fortune of, of listening to this right now. Chris, I'll make a YouTube channel. Next just, just do it, Chris. Just play Please. that one. On your... <laughs> just do it. Play that. Every weekly dose of comedy by CG. You're not monetized, so the cursing won't matter. <laughs> I'm not worried about the cursing. Obviously, See, that's the thing. I'm not. I'm not monetized. I don't care. Play it on your next stream, though, will I? I will. But I'm saying all that's going to do is going to whet people's appetite for potentially you having your own channel. He doesn't get it, Red. He doesn't get it. He doesn't I get don't it. know if I... I don't want to deal with the upkeep and then people... You're what a upkeep? Dick, you are, what you upkeep? are a dick to that guy. That guy, you are a dick to that guy. Nobody cares. Here's you don't the have thing. to pay attention to any of the comments. You deserve, you deserve the bad customer service. You <laughs> that voice. <laughs> that voice just wants... It's I mean, so annoying. That, that might be true. You might deserve bad customer service, but... Yeah, it doesn't take away Wrong. from the comedy factor. <laughs> yeah, no. All I'm saying is I, I'm very nice to people, and and half of the ones I've sent you that I've exploded on are scammers who are trying to who aren't legitimate customer service people. They they're customer service people in the same way that you know, uh, uh, you know. That the Redskins are a football team, you know. I'm, I'm waiting for the part where this becomes less hilarious. So, so there are people who I just 
want to put in their place and make feel small because they have no life or morals and they try and scam me out of my money. And that's why, like the student loan scammer from Nigeria, I told her, uh, you know, <laughs> you go home and tell your husband how many people you screw every day. <laughs> See, that's funny. It's yeah, that's pretty funny. I mean, we need to have like this a weekly CGM comedy show, you know? That's what but I'm I don't... Do- I don't do it all the time. The calls only come in every once in a while. Oh, I sent you a new one today, actually, by the way. I, I listened to from it. The, the one with the Apple support? The... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so someone, just a quick uh, synopsis of the video. Someone called Chris uh, stating that his his information is uh, leaked and that he's from Apple uh, Care and that he's going to rectify the situation. And Chris just... Right off the bat, he's like, "Well, yeah, you're a scammer, POS." He's like, "Oh, really?" He's like, "He's like, I'm a POS." So like, he started playing into it right away. They, they uh, they've become more and more brazen lately, and I think they're yeah. they're coming up with new and innovative ways to screw Americans, mm-hmm. um, which is unfortunate because you know, for every person like Chris um, that snuffs the stuff stuff out. Right from the start, there's dozens and literally dozens, maybe thousands of people, Americans, who fall for this stuff. Mainly yeah. old people. Yeah. You know, especially. Um, well, and they try and scam old people because it, there's a hand. Probably what, fifteen percent of old people have some form of dementia. I mean, yep, well, yeah, that's where you, all the money's at too. If you listen to Chris's voice, if you're a scammer, is he not a prime target? Yes. Why would I be a prime target? <laughs> um, because they're like he got a mouthful of mayo. I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying that there's potential for some kind of deficiency there, and I'll just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> oh, everyone can fucking kick my ass. <laughs> oh, I, I'll take an IQ test against any of you all fucking day. Oh, Chris is hurt. And now he's taking it personal. At least, at least he's uh, not as bad as he was earlier. <laughs> yeah, so that for those of you guys bad. listening to this right now, um, here on the West Coast, it's still September 23rd, which is, uh, we just got through watching Monday Night Football, Redskins uh, hosting the Chicago Bears. And uh, man, did, did Chris really blow a gasket? <laughs> and, and I mean, literally a minute into the game. Um, it, <laughs> It really was quite a spectacle. Um, Can you blame him though? I mean, if your team played that bad, would you want to? Would you want to not blow a gasket? <laughs> I'm a Steelers fan, and my Steelers are zero and three, and I'm mad. See, here's the thing. Here's the difference. Your Steelers have a reason for being zero and three. You're missing vital pieces yeah. of your offense. Mm-hmm. Chris's team, on the other hand, they have a guy ready to go. Uh, in Haskins. Why would you put him in? Why would you put him in and let him, that piece of crap offensive line just let him get his ass sacked 15 yeah. times and then hurt and break yeah. his ankle or his ACL and then he's out for nine, 20 months and then he comes back and he's half the player he would have been. I think in Case Keenum, dude, you suck tonight. You suck. You can't hold the ball. Then when you do hold it, you throw it to the other team. Screw you, dude. See, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We we had the pleasure of listening to this for three and a half hours this evening, and I will say uh, the pleasure was all mine. <laughs> no, I I turned. It over. First of all, you took a nap because you dipped out, <laughs> and you call me an old man. And you're off all day. I'm there just enjoying it. I was just enjoying that. First of <laughs> all, Chris complained, and then I turned it over to the Nationals who actually <laughs> made the playoffs. And then they did what? One seven to two, and and I'd fired the bullpen coach because <laughs> this is like the third straight game the bullpen sucked. Why <laughs> they he won? He is bro. all about firing people. This guy. <laughs> they won, dude. Why would you fire them if they won? Because like... I'm tired of the bullpen <laughs> sucking and. It, and the way it works is the two wild card teams play a one game play in, and their blow pin. I call it the blow blow pin. pin. <laughs> blow pin. 
because it blows so hard, uh, is going to blow the game, and then they're going to be on the golf course. I mean, who are they face? Who are they looking to face now? Like facing the Cubs? Or they what? play the Brewers in the uh, wild card. Okay. Game. okay. I gotta say, with Chris being so fired up. Uh, you know, and and you guys have listened to me and him talking about you know potentially uh, me going to the East Coast and uh, possibly oh, visiting you think him I'm and, paying for and your hanging out. Um, <laughs> so we we've talked about sushi. stuff, and he's like, "Yeah, we should, I should totally take you to a baseball game." And for the longest time, the answer was <laughs> no. Actually, correction, it was hell no, because I, I don't care about baseball. But with how fired up he is, I w- actually would be interested in seeing this. In real life, in in, in his element, um, with other people around, I'd, I'd very much be interested in seeing. Well, I, so, so Chris, I, I'm telling you right now, my, if that offer is still on the table, I'd love to go to a baseball the game with you. My sections know who I am, and they they watch me. And it's actually funny because the seat neighbor of mine at the Nationals who has the same plan, he's like a cheery version of me but he's still just as cynical but he's just cheery about it <laughs> like for example like uh you know if we're playing the phillies right it, it like the count will be 3-0 so one ball away from walk he'll go oh he's gonna walk him and then harper's gonna come up and hit a home run it's two nothing phillies this game's over i don't know what these words are that you're saying i was gonna say i'm caring less and less oh yeah <laughs> but but he's very he's the optimistic version of me no, not the optimistic, just the less pissed off version of me, but he's <laughs> just as pessimistic. Would you call him the less pissed off Vic? Yeah. Oh, and so, then you can, oh, and you, yeah, I'll take you to a game, and then you can meet the uh, crazy PA announcer guy who comes down with a non working microphone and announces all the uh, lineup changes. All right, I'm in. But here's the thing: I'm not staying for the whole game. I'm staying for like the first inning, maybe. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna spend fifty dollars and then watch one ninth of the game. Dude, you think that's bad? I'm I'm the guest in your city. Fifty dollars <laughs> is nothing compared to what I'm gonna do when when we go out for dinner. Uh, you, know, you can blow seventy five <laughs> if your six figure fat salary can blow. Seventy-five dollars on the Redskins, which I told you was a dumb idea. I can't believe you actually did that. Wow. Seventy-five dollars on the Redskins. I mean, and I, I told you you I were had, a I, freaking I idiot. It. Did I not tell you you were a freaking idiot? I mean, I yeah, but that doesn't really like say 75. anything coming from you. Uh, well, that's, that's look, dope. look at the look at the mustache you grew and thought looked good. So I don't I have a mustache thought. anymore. What are you talking about? <laughs> Well, you no, you have scruff because you're <laughs> growing in slow. Uh, but anyways, um, <laughs> you're the one who also said the Ravens would beat the Browns and then lost to them. And that's a lot. That's a lot. Why? Why are you the way you are, Chris? <laughs> what, what? What makes you tick? Fire me, then. I don't care. <laughs> Fire you from what? Quit telling people to get fired. What? You, Fire you from what? You choose. Oh my God. Fired. Just fired. <laughs> yeah. So but see, everything you've said negative about me, I've been vindicated. The day that, that I mean to the customer service people, no, they take an attitude or trying to scam me. You know. Well, everything. usually it seems like you're the one egging them on, but this time, <laughs> you know, sometimes like I feel like you're doing it just to get a reaction out of them. Um, well, that's part of it, <laughs> you know. But this recent one you sent me was genuinely uh, inappropriate and bad on the customer service end. Yep. So, so um, quick question to Ghost Rider: yes, How, sir. Uh, what, what parts, without doxing yourself, obviously, uh, whereabouts in the nation do you reside? Um, I live in Eastern Tennessee. Eastern Tennessee? Yes, sir. You like the Virginia board. Okay. So are you a Titans fan? Um, I am a Titans fan. I grew up as a Titans fan. I am actually a Saints fan. You're a Saints fan. What do you make of uh uh the Drew Breesless 
Saints. Obviously, it's not really <laughs> affecting them because they're still winning games. But I mean, like it was a it was a hard game to watch. on the first part, honestly. But then, like when they had that, because like the Seahawks like kept on like throwing those deep balls, and like our like secondary could not stop it. And but Teddy came in and did a superb job as a quarterback and Kamara just kept on like pounding the ball down, scoring those touchdowns and getting those first downs when we needed them. Yeah, that must be nice to have. Oh yeah. Was, uh, I mean, I, I watched the Ravens and Chiefs game and we had not, none of that stuff that you just mentioned. I mean, you had um, Ingram like score those three touchdowns at the and the former Saint too, which I'm glad he actually went to Baltimore. I like I like um, Ingram. He's Mark Ingram's pretty good, great running back. I think he was a solid acquisition over the offseason for the Ravens. Oh yeah, you know the Ravens have an easy season this year to win the division. Well, and Lamar regressed a fifty-one percent completion rating, a sixty-seven point whatever the hell it was QBR. That that's back to Lamar's not a throw. Lamar's not a thrower. You mean quarterback? Just say it. <laughs> Just say it if you're going to troll He's him. He's not a good thrower. He played a real team for once. And look at his stats. Barely over 50%. And a QBR under 70, dude. And 70 is still pretty low. I mean, you want to be 80s, 80s, 90s, you know, with your QBR. I agree with you. I'm not saying you're wrong. But that he had a really bad game, and you know, let's hope for his sake he's better in the next game against the Browns. But you know, uh, that's going to always be a knock on him until he beats one of the better teams. You know, yeah. that was the knock on, um, you know, Aaron Rodgers for years was he couldn't get out of the uh, NFC playoffs. And look what know? happened to him. He's one of the greatest so, now. Yeah. But that was a knock on him for years as he couldn't get out of the playoffs, and then he finally broke through several years in. So yeah, let's see what happens with Lamar. So I can't speak on everyone's behalf. I can say on my behalf, um, my week three football picks were absolutely stupendous. Uh, I only got four games wrong. Uh, there were There were a couple surprises in there. Uh, even though, let's see, I'm trying to think of what was the, probably the biggest upset in my picks that I absolutely got wrong. Um, I the think, Redskins. No, no, I that game, so you keep saying the Redskins. I actually bet for the Redskins to win, but I had the Bears pick to win in my pick em week. <laughs> that makes it worse! <laughs> so, that makes it worse! You spent $75. <laughs> <laughs> knowing that they would lose. Uh, by the way, if you he think... has a point. This is not helping your... By idea. the way, if you think my broke ass is going to spend $200 on sushi for you when your six-figure salary allows you to just take $75 and burn it, not happening, bro. You're paying for my dinner. but um, <laughs> Not happening. I'm most surprised, I will say, about... You know, we just mentioned this. The New Orleans Saints, how how they 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 continue to thrive and succeed without Drew Brees. I didn't know Teddy Bridgewater still had anything left in the tank. Wow. I, I I gotta be honest with you. He 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 looks really poised. Uh granted they won by less than a touchdown, but to go into Seattle, a very, very hostile environment, and to eke out the win. I mean, that's that says something to me. Yes. It shows Pete Carroll needs to retire. No, Pete Carroll's no, he's 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 okay. He's yeah. okay. Um I, the other and upset I, I had was Detroit, you know, beating Philadelphia, which I did not see happening. I did not see that coming. Um the Thursday night football game right off the rip for week three, I got that one wrong. Uh 
Jacksonville. I did too, yeah. Uh, Jacksonville I, ended up I thought winning. Jacksonville was going to be a train wreck with the Jalen Ramsey destruction. Now it doesn't look like they even are going to train him. Yeah. But then apparently on the radio I heard today that he just called the team and said, I'm sick, I'm not coming in. So that distraction's not going anywhere. Yep, exactly. So where would be a good fit for him? I'm really not I, sure. I, I think a team that's like a defensive back away. From what it sounds like, though, the team is not going to allow him to be um, traded. But they're not going. They're not. They're going to work out a deal. They're year. not going to let him get yeah. traded. Without Foles, they're not going anywhere. What are you talking about without Foles? The, the new guy uh, Minshew did amazing. Oh yeah. Yeah, but but is he, a, is he? For, but. I, I, I'm not sold yet. I, I don't I want to see that he's not a flash in a pan because anybody can have a great game against any team, you know. I don't know, I thought he looked pretty uh brilliant. But he's playing the Titans. I mean, come on. I mean yeah. he has a point. <laughs> it's it's the Titans, it's not like he played against a Patriots or something. If he beats if he beats, you know, the, the Titans are probably in the bottom half of the league, you know. Yeah. I, and to me, to me, if you're going to be a have good stats, you got to beat the top half of the league. Yeah. I, I, if they're 15th, I don't care. That's top half of the league. But at least you're beating a opponent that you don't go, well, we should. You know, there's press conferences after a game. You go, well, that was a good win. And there's press conferences after a game where you go, well, we should have won that game. You know? Yeah, I agree with and, you. And when you do the, wow, that's a good win. Those are the teams I think you need to beat to say you're a good player or a good team. I absolutely agree with you. I, yeah. I, we don't disagree there. But I think for him to step in to his new role, um, to, to start a game as a rookie like that, the way he did, tremendous. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I give him credit, but let's prove to me you're not a flash in the pan. Yeah, no, I'm, I agree. I agree. Um, I think this week he'll face a, a, a different test, too. I think he's... Now he's he's facing a. We'll get into the picks in a second, but he's facing a very uh, experienced team, if you will. Yeah. Um, they've got a lot of experience on that team. Uh, cool. One of the guys that leads the team actually is a former elite Super Bowl champ. But that's beside the point. Oh, jeez. Uh, if, if, <laughs> if you guys are prepared for, it, <laughs> get can... a room with him already and just no. admit that you'd go gay for it. <sighs> Damn it, Chris. <laughs> If you guys are ready, we can jump into the week five picks or week uh, is it four week, five? Picks. week four picks. Week four. I can't believe. Can you guys believe it's already been a quarter of the season already? Well, can we get to week freaking seventeen already? So the- <laughs> <laughs> misery. Can Wait a be minute, over. you're not a Jets fan. <laughs> yes, just end the season. Oh, the Jets will kick our ass. <laughs> We're gonna lose to the Dolphins. That's pretty. Can- did you, did you just come up with that see that happening. The just end the season thing? Did you just, no, it's a thing. It's a I've thing. never heard of that. <laughs> That's brilliant. It's a thing in New York, like New York for people who don't like the Jets. <laughs> That's so good. Um, okay, so um, we're gonna. Here's gonna be the order uh, because you're the guest, um, Ghost Rider. You're gonna go first, okay? Whenever I announce okay. the matchup, and then we're gonna go with. I think last week we went with Sarge. So this week we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna go you, Chris, Sarge, then me. All right. So just right. we're just briefly gonna talk about each matchup, and then you okay. kind of give your take on who's gonna win. Um, and I'll I'll wrap it up and move up to the next person, next uh, game. So um, Thursday night football this week. Um, this has potential of being a good game. It really does. Um, Green Bay, the th- undefeated three and zero Green Bay Packers are hosting. The one and two Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Green Bay's favored as getting four and a half points at home. Okay. Um, I think that um, uh, Packers will win this one. I mean, Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey are both like questionable for the game, and I think that their defense would give um, Wentz like a hard time up there, especially up there in Green Bay, because it's honestly hard to play up there in Green Bay, especially now since it's becoming the fall season up there. Yep. 
And I think Rodgers will come in hot, and I think that Green Bay will win by 14. They're taking Green Bay um, 14 points at home. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm going to pick the Packers. I think the Eagles uh, showed who they were when they were down 17 to the Redskins. The Redskins just suck under moron clown ass. Oh, here we go. And, uh, you know, his soft zone that allowed the Eagles to come back. Otherwise, they would be 0-3. Over moron clown ass Minuski. Chris reminds me so much of Donald Trump. Like, he's got a, a, he's got a nickname for every single person he doesn't like. <laughs> well, I have one for Terry McLaurin. Terrific Terry. Oh, that wasn't, that wasn't what the hype. It's we, not as fun. And dynamic like Dwayne the guy. Haskins, so I have positive ones too. Okay, Sarge, uh, I'm gonna take the Packers because I don't have any faith in the in the Eagles this year. They haven't they haven't been doing that great, and some of the injuries they have are just I don't know. It makes me doubt them. Yeah. I'm with you there. Uh, I think I'm going to take Green Bay to go 4-0, and improve to 4-0 and at home. Uh, as Ghost Rider stated earlier, it is a tough place to play. It's one of the most hostile um, environments in the NFL, especially at night during a primetime game. Um, you know, Lambeau's going to be thumping. I think Green Bay's going to win. Well, let's not forget, too, that the Eagles are the only fan base that have ever booed Santa. This is true. That, no. that that takes a different level of scumbag. Um, <laughs> moving on to Sunday, um, the early games. Uh, the first one is unfortunately the now zero and three Washington Redskins going oh, to the one Christ. and <laughs> <laughs> the zero and three winless Redskins going into New York to play the Giants, the one and two Giants. Um, the Vegas stats on that right now, the Giants are currently favored by three. And I'll reiterate for the people who weren't here last week what, th- what three means. Usually... Um, 300! <laughs> usually three, uh, when the home team gets three, that that's all it is. It's just because they're home favorites. That means pretty much the stat line's even. So with that being said, Ghost Rider, who are you taking? On the, the Redskins at the Giants. Um, I'm honestly... Redskins, honestly. I think they might pull this one out, honestly. Oh, no way. Moron <laughs> dipshit. <laughs> He's going to be in the soft zone. The, uh, Daniel Jones is going to light him up. He's going to set some sort of freaking rookie record. Uh, crappy <laughs> Keenum is going to fumble the ball and run around and then he went, or throw it to the blue uh, defenders chest and they're going to lose 48 to 9. Jesus Christ. Do you God. think that this is the week where they pull the trigger on starting Haskins or no? Gruden just said, I can't be changing people every five minutes or whatever. I can't do it. <laughs> but, you know, it, if moron clown ass dipshit Minoski isn't fired after this week, I, 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 I'll just explode. And it, really, until Bruce Allen is fired, nothing's going to get better. This organization is such a dumpster fire. You know, you could you could take some dumpster with just the whole community's dog shit in it and light it on fire, and wow. it would have more potential. Pretty than vivid this team under under. <laughs> Bruce Allen, you sir are a garbage <laughs> human garbage. Let the record show you called him sir. Okay. Um... <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> I think that the game's going to depend on who they, who each team has as a starting quarterback. Um, Crap ass Keenum. If they start Dwayne Haskins, I think they have a chance. If they don't, I think they're dead in the water. Okay, I feel the same. I feel exactly the same. Uh, are Are you impressed at all with how uh, how Daniel Jones has been playing really recently? Uh, he's played what one game so far? Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, he can't, he mounted a pretty good comeback. I'm, I'm pretty were, happy with what were, I saw. They were down what, 15 points. Yeah. Something like that. Yep. Yeah. Maybe I mean, it was a back. small margin of victory. They only won by like one point. But That's, it doesn't matter if you win by a point or 100 points. I know. Get the win, right? I know. I agree. Okay. Nope. So I'm More actually going gonna... to ruin it. You will ruin it, Chris. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going to take the Giants as well at home. Uh, I'm sorry, Chris. Your 0 and 3 Redskins become 0 and 4, still winless. Washington Redskins. They're going to lose to the Dolphins. They're that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus the Christ. next game is the uh, thanks to the Ravens' loss last week. The undefeated Kansas City Chiefs at the two zero and one. Let's not forget the the Detroit Lions tied one of their games. Uh, they're at the two zero and one Detroit Lions. Uh, Kansas City favored by five and a half points on the road. That's going to be a honestly a tough game, for, especially up there in Detroit. I think that he will pull it out. Um, Kansas City will. Um, man, I think that it's it's going to be close, but I think it might be a last minute drive from to win. Really? Okay. Yes. Chiefs by eleven or more. I think the Lions are a joke. I think that their wins have come against. Mediocre to subpar teams. Search. I think the Chiefs are going to win by a margin of a lot of points. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I think the, the the Lions are going to get going to get spanked pretty good. Yeah, uh, and once again, I'm going to be with Sarge with this one. I think it's not going to be close at all. The Kansas City Chiefs are going to be winning this game handedly. Um. It's going to be like the Bears playing the Redskins. Come on. Yeah, right? Not even a matchup at that point. So, yeah, (laughs) Kansas City, I'm taking them big on the road. Uh, Next game is the 1-2 Tennessee Titans at the 1-2 Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta favored four points at home. Atlanta. A particular reason? Um... Not really. I think that if they, my only thing is if they saw Henry, they got it. Because okay. I mean, I mean, though Mariota like is consistent, but like he he runs too much, honestly. And if he runs, a, like he might end up getting hurt. And he's been getting hurt like this time this season, like for the past few seasons. Mariota's been kind of quiet lately too. He's been off the map. Yeah, he has, but I mean, I like him, but I think this is going to be his do or die year, honestly. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with the Titans, too, I guess. Arch? Um, they're playing in Atlanta. Yeah. I'm going to give it to Atlanta just because of home team advantage. I don't. I don't think that either one of those teams is going to be very good this year. But I'm. 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 I think I agree that neither one of these teams are going to go very far this year. But for Week Four's picks, I'm actually going to take Tennessee against the spread at <laughs> away at Atlanta to take the win. I think uh, that offense is like a steamrolling train. It starts off slow, but once you get Derrick Henry involved. It becomes a very difficult to stop them. It's a it's it's going to be a, a, a repeat of what happened last week, pretty much. Except this time, the Tennessee Titans are going to win. So Next. you're picking the Titans to win and cover, or just win, or just uh, cover? I I got them to win. I don't know if covering four points, but I got them to win for sure. Okay. Next game is going to be the one and two Carolina Panthers at the two and one Houston Texans. Uh, Houston getting five points uh, at home. 
I think that the um, Texans got it, honestly. Um, I've seen, like, when they played week one against the Saints, I mean, I've seen Deshaun Watson throw some really, really good passes to their receivers, and Carolina's secondary is not subpar, honestly. I mean, it's it's good, but it's not that good, honestly. So I have Houston by a decent margin. All right. Chris? Um, I'm going to pick the Texans. Um, I just think they're a much better team. And uh, I think they're kind of having, getting back to where people thought they should be the last couple of years. Sarge? I'm going to go with the Texans just because I like them better. <laughs> okay. J- they got J.J. Watt, man. You got you got J.J. Watt, Deshaun Watson, and DeAndre Hopkins. It's, there's a lot of playmakers on there. Absolutely. In fact, yeah, enough I mean, playmakers to where last week they were um, they were initially favored on the road going into San Diego, and look at what happened. They 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 pulled out the win. So, um, no, that, that's this Texans team is. I, I like them. I think they're they're the real deal. Right. And and like you said, they have a lot of weapons offensively, defensively. J.J. Watt is probably one of my favorite players in the entire league. So um, I'm definitely taking Houston at home to get that win as well. Speaking of the Chargers, the 1-2 and two now, uh, L.A. Chargers, are going into the 0-3 Miami Dolphins. Um, Chargers, get this, get this right. This is probably, you won't see the stat line anywhere else in the season this year, I'm calling it. The Chargers, they are away. They are favored by 16 and a half points on the road. Oh, my gosh. Uh, um, yeah. Chargers. <laughs> There's Chargers no by, explanation necessary. Chargers by like 25, honestly. <laughs> I'm going to say the Chargers win by at least 17. Yeah. Uh, I think the Dol- – but, you know, in fairness, I think – the Dolphins are trying to lose, so I I, I don't think it's the Chargers are going to try that hard to win. You know what I mean? They're not going to have to play an A plus game to win. So I've heard of people Chargers saying that lot. recently that the the Dolphins are very clearly tanking, but I don't know. I've seen some of their highlights. They they actually look like they are trying to play and win. See, I don't think that the Dolphins are trying to tank. I think the Dolphins' management's tanking. Okay. Because yeah. they've traded away all of the good talent that they had mm-hmm. for draft picks. So I think that – I think that's what's what's happening is that the, the management just wants a fresh team. They want a fresh yeah. start. So are you uh, – is that you saying you're going to take the Chargers? Yeah, I'm going to take the Chargers. I took the Chargers last week too and – it worked out for you. I'm going to take the Chargers as well. Uh, I feel like, uh, like I said, I, I'm really happy with how they performed uh, last week against the Texans. Unfortunately, they lost by a very, very small margin, but they played a really good game. Um, and the Miami Dolphins are just terrible, terrible team. Right now they are, at least. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking the Chargers um, to win away. Next game is the three and O. Oh, the battle of the three and O's. Who would have ever thought? Who would have ever thought the Buffalo Bills would be three and O to start off the season? But what? anyway, that's what they are. The three and O Buffalo Bills are hosting the three and O New England Patriots, and the Patriots are favored by seven points. That's. Mm, I mean, like both those teams haven't played anyone good, honestly. I mean. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, no, no offense. <laughs> no, 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 no offense. No offense. I mean, like it's, it's. I mean, I think. Honestly, it's up there, Buffalo. I think Buffalo might have this one. On. I mean, I mean, really? call me crazy. I'm mean, coming, call me crazy, but I think that could be the upset of the week right there. Interesting. Uh, it's in New England, right? 
Buffalo. No, no. New England's on the road. They're playing at Buffalo. Uh, I'm going to take New England and pretty much a landslide uh, by like, I don't know, maybe not landslide, but 28-17. I think they win and uh, make it not it will be closer than people think, but not like as close. close. Okay. I'm going to take the Patriots because the Patriots have been scoring 30 points on everyone they've played so far. And yes, the Steelers are hurting. They're not great, but they shouldn't have only scored three points. That was, that was a terrible game. And as soon as that happened, I put on Twitter, my team sucks this year. We're going eight and eight. <laughs> Best case scenario, right? Eight and eight. Yeah. Now eight. it's not even that. Now I, I we'll be lucky to have a have a even season. Yeah. So, um, as much as I want to pick the upset here, because every week I do pick an upset, um, I don't think that Buffalo has enough. To keep up with New England, I think New England's going to get in there. I know it's going to be loud, but New England's going to get the win and become four zero to nobody's surprise. The next game is two and one Indianapolis Colts hosting the Oakland Raiders, who are also one. Uh, no, so two and one Indianapolis Colts hosting the one and two Oakland Raiders. Uh, Indianapolis favored seven points at home. I say, um, coach, honestly, um, I mean, they got, I mean, Brissett's been looking really, really good after, um, what happened with Luck when he retired and Brissett took the team under his wings and he's been doing really, really good. And I had, um, the coach winning by four points, four or five points. Uh, you know, as much as I don't didn't think the Colts would be good, I think I might have to pick them. So you are taking the Colts at home? Yeah, just because uh, they've been playing well and Brissett's been better than I think most people expected. I'm going to take the Colts too. Um. I guess I mean, no, I take that back. I'm not taking the Colts. Ooh. Okay. I don't think the Colts are going to win that game. Any particular reason? Um, just because I said at the beginning of the season, I don't think they're going to do anything without luck, and I think eventually this kid's going to break down. So. Okay, that's fair. So you're taking you're taking Oakland Raiders. Uh, yeah, I, I think the Raiders are due one. I, they're definitely doing one. I don't know if they're going to get it this week. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, as I'm Ghost Rider pointed out, has been playing quite good. Uh, I, I didn't expect this level of play from him. I thought for sure the Colts were going to lose the remaining games of their season once Andrew Luck retired, but no, that's not the case at all. Uh, in fact, uh, Jacoby Brissett is surprising a lot of people. Um, probably including himself at how how well he's playing. So I'm taking Indianapolis to win at home this week. Um, next game is the two and one Baltimore Ravens getting their you know their only loss so far last week against the Chiefs. Two and one Baltimore Ravens hosting the one and two Cleveland Browns. So rivalry game here. Um, Baltimore is favored seven points at home. I mean, I say like with Lamar Jackson and Mark Ingram, they're just like a, honestly like one of the most dynamic duos in the AFC. I think that Baltimore will win. Um. Maybe this is a game where Lamar shows that he is a 
thrower. So he's a quarterback, Chris. What are you trying to say? Well, we discussed this earlier in the podcast, and I gave you stats that you couldn't refute. You're such but, a hater. But, <laughs> you know, with all going on with Jacksonville, you know, uh, I I just think that there's a lot of issues there. I'm not sold that they're for real. Uh, I'll take the Ravens. Okay, Sarge. Um, I don't know, man. I I hate to take the Ravens, but I kind of I kind of feel like I have to. <sighs> you said it earlier on my stream. I mean, you you self admitted said the Ravens have an easy path to victory. They the do, AFC they North. do, and the Browns were supposed to be good, but they're not. So, yeah, I'm gonna take the Ravens. I don't okay. think the Browns are going to do anything. They had, again, the Browns had high expectations, and I don't know if it's the coaching or if the players just aren't clicking, but they they haven't been very good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you be that bad with the tools that they have? That mm. I think the same thing could be said of the Ravens. Um, you'd be surprised. I don't think there's going to be a sl- landslide victory this week. Grant, oh, I don't I think am, it's going to be a landslide. I think I, the Ravens still come up on top. Yeah, I mean, I'm taking the Ravens, but lo- what you just said, to have all those weapons and not have it not have it work to its full potential is kind of, is kind of disappointing. Um, but I think Baltimore is going to get the win this week. And hopefully, hopefully, my hope is that um, there's some more chemistry being formed between Lamar and the receivers. Because last week... He had two passes to a receiver. Like, all his passes were to tight ends. I think at the start of the fourth quarter, he had only two passes to a, an actual receiver. That's not good enough. That might have worked last week, but, I mean, it, well, clearly it didn't work because we lost the game. But <laughs> when, I was going to say it. You, you <laughs> do it. I mean... That's not, that's not completion. Sus- that is not sustainable. We need to be able to get the ball out to the receivers more early and often, one, I think. One completion to a receiver in the first half. Yeah, yeah, not good. That's not good at all. And no, then but- at the same time, last week was their first time playing a, a team that was worth a damn, really. Yeah. Yeah, the first two. They proved they can't pull it out against a good team. Well, I see what you're saying. But and who um, who have they played this season so far? They played Miami. Yeah. Who did they play last we've week? Been, we've been beating up on tomato cans. I agree with you. But hopefully, hopefully we get the win this week. It's not going to be by a big margin, like I said. But I got the Ravens winning by a little bit. Um, now that's going to be the end of the the daytime games, the early, uh, the late afternoon games. Uh, here we go. It's going to be the three and zero L.A. Rams hosting the one and two Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, Rams favored by nine points at home. I was going to say the Rams. You're taking the Rams? Yes. Um, I mean, Goff and Gurley, I mean. On Super Bowl and their, de- and their defense, too. I mean, you got Aaron, Aaron Donald. He's like one of the best defensive players in NFL right now. And you got Cooper Cup, too. I mean, like. I think Cooper Cup will win the comeback player of the year if he stays healthy, shows off, and like performs the way he's been performing. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with the Rams by a pretty decent margin. Okay. I think the Rams are just way too good. I have to take them. Yep, Rams. Uh, I'm gonna... I don't. I don't even need to explain it. It's just no. You don't. Rams. You don't. You don't have to explain it. Yeah, I'm taking the Rams too. All right, so we're all on the Rams. The next game is the. Oh man, what an ugly record! So th- this is an- another one of those teams that tied at one point. I think it was Week One. But the O two and one Arizona Cardinals hosting the two and one Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Seattle favored by five points on the road. I say that Seattle win. Seattle has their honestly 
the chip on their shoulder. They got, I mean, beat by New Orleans without Breeze. I think Seattle is still kind of bitter about that loss, and I think they're going to come in there and like play like just like keep on throwing it. And I think that the Seahawks will destroy Arizona, honestly. I agree. Uh, hmm. If it was in Seattle, I'd take uh, Seattle by a lot. Uh, since it's in Arizona. I'm going to say it's going to be like 31 to 21, maybe 24. Okay. Yeah. So fairly high scoring. Uh, I think both offenses are pretty power. I mean, Kyler Murray's been putting up points. Oh, yeah. But their defense just sucks. And time for a new defensive coordinator. Maybe they can hire more on clown ass dipshit. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Seahawks just because they're coming off a loss, and I don't have a lot of faith in Arizona's team. Kyler Murray did pretty good last week, but I don't I don't think their defense is gonna be able to hold up. Okay, I'm gonna take uh, Seattle on the road, and it's gonna be uh, may I'm gonna give them ten points. So they're they're gonna cover the spread for sure. Uh, I'm I'm taking Seattle on the road by ten. Next game is the two and one Chicago Bears, who we watched uh, play the Redskins tonight. No, uh, they didn't play. They just walked in and took it. They walked in and took it. Uh, the two <laughs> and one Chicago Bears hosting the two and one Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Chicago favored by only two and a half points at home. Gosh, that's that's a that's a tough one to choose. Honestly, that might be one of the best games we. Got. I honestly, I have the Vikings win it. Honestly, you got the Vikings. Yes. All right, Chris. Both quarterbacks have not been good, and you can't judge um, Trubisky on tonight when he played a moron clown ass dipshit uh, and I defense. So, <laughs> um. I think Cousins is a little better. I'll give him the edge. Uh, not a great game, I think. Vikings by three to three to nine, maybe ten. Okay, I'm going to take the Bears just because they have a dominant defense. That defense is really good. I mean, Khalil Mack got two sacks today. They have eleven sacks yeah. total over three games. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah, Khalil Mack got like two sacks, a strip fumble. Um, yeah, no, he he looked really uh, good. Hawk Clinton Dix got two picks, and one was yeah. for a pick six. Yep, they're a really good defense. Their offense is a little touchy, but I think I think they'll be able to hold out. I, th- I think that I think they'll take the uh, the win over the Vikings. I agree with you. Um, however, where I disagree is that I think it's really easy to look good against really crap teams. So I'm taking Minnesota to win on the road this week uh, in Chicago at, at Soldier Field. So uh, Minnesota is my pick. My only argument to that is they have 11 sacks, 11 in three games. That's yeah. A, that's a lot for yeah. any team. That's a pretty gnarly statistic there. but That's a good defense, or at least a good front seven. Yeah. They've got a decent secondary too, so Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. But you know what they say, offense wins games, defense wins championships. Yep. Mm-hmm. And right now we need uh teams to win games. So. The last of the afternoon games is gonna be the Owen three. I never saw this coming. The Owen three Denver Broncos hosting the one and two Jacksonville Jaguars. Denver favored by three points at home. I think that um, Denver might win this. Um, like, Mishu, um is actually facing kind of an elite quarterback this time. Or Super Bowl champ Joe Flacco. Um, yes, sir. Would be close. Yes. 
I think that the Broncos will win their first game of the season by about four points. All right. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not high on Jacksonville with their issues. So, so what's your pick? Uh, I guess, but I think they're better than Denver, so I'm going to pick Jacksonville. All right. I'm thinking Jacksonville because uh, they're playing against a garbage quarterback. It's way overrated. You're a troll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking Denver. I, I think Minshew's got his hands full this week. Uh, he's going to be able to meet Von Miller for the first time in his career. I think that'd be pretty cool to see how he, he uh, holds up, how that offensive line holds up for him. Um, but I'm taking Denver at home, going against the spread here. All right, you and, then, boy. and then we have a Sunday night football game. This actually might be a good one. The 2-1 and one New Orleans Saints are hosting the 3-0 and oh undefeated Dallas Cowboys. Dallas, oh, by the way, uh, Dallas favored by two and a half points on the road. Uh, this one honestly might be a harder one. I mean, this is a time since Drew has been signed with the Saints. The first time he actually has not played. At home in New Orleans. I mean, like, there will be a lot of fans from New Orleans, yes, but there'll be, like, as much as fans, if not, maybe a little bit, little bit more than the Cowboys. I mean, if Vander S stops Kamara and the running game, the Cowboys have it. But I might give the slight edge to Saints, honestly. Um, but their secondary has to come to to stop their lethal receivers and especially Elliot too as a running back so they got their hands full this week but hopefully the fans are there and like is that up there and Mercedes been my right, Chris uh, I hate Dallas I, I think I do too I really hope bad things happen to them um, well no <laughs> I didn't say <laughs> as a team. I didn't say individually. You say you want the team bus to crash and burn. You're putting words in my mouth. That's, not <laughs> that's what I'm um, hearing. Well, that's because you have a crappy mind. But <laughs> um, I'm gonna say the Saints. I think. I think they have a little bit of swagger coming off that win in Seattle. And, uh, you know, nobody really thought that a breezeless team would have a chance in Seattle, and they pretty much kicked their ass. So I wouldn't underestimate the Sean Payton team. So you're taking the Saints at home? Yep. Okay, Sarge? Yeah, I'm going to take the Saints too. I think uh, if they can shut down... Ezekiel Elliott, I don't think that, uh, I've said for years, I don't think that, that, uh, what's his name, Dak can, can compensate without Zeke being there. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think, and, and how long is Zeke out for? Oh, I don't even know. Is he out at all? I don't think he's out. Mm-hmm. I think if they could shut him out, then. I got you. They win. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take Dallas away. Um, I think that because they're both arena uh, teams, both the Dallas Cowboys and the New Orleans Saints are, um, I'm going to take Dallas to win away. Um, I I don't think that you can slow, you can stop the Dallas offense. I think you can slow them down a little bit, but you cannot stop them. Uh, The Saints, their defense has been looking kind of shoddy recently too. Um, so with that being said, I, I, I hate to say it cause I hate the Cowboys, but, um, Dallas going four and oh, on, on the road. And that's going to do it for Sunday night. We got one game left this week and this, this game has potential or rather had the potential of being a really good marquee matchup, but uh, it's just going to be so bad. 
we've got the winless Cincinnati Bengals going into the winless Pittsburgh Steelers Heinz Field. So someone's getting a win here. That's I guess that's the the upside to it. But Pittsburgh's favored by four points at home. I think that Pittsburgh will win this one honestly. Let's see if they can. Uh, Mason Rudolph is a Mason sub- Crosby or is it Rudolph? Mason, uh, Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph. He what's a, what's his status? Is he good? He's good. He's he's. He's not great, but he's still basically a rookie. He didn't play much last year. The only times he's played has been preseason and like a game and a half. And what about James Conner? That's the that's the clincher. Yeah, and Rocky. you got Juju. So I mean, I think you guys have a nice tandem right there. And I do have Pittsburgh winning that one. Honestly, first game of the season. Uh yeah, Pittsburgh. I I think uh I've been saying this all along. The uh Bengals hired Zach Taylor thinking he was Sean McCoy and he is going to be a bust. I don't think he'll win ten games in th- two years. I think he'll be fired. Of course. Of course you think that. And I think the Bengals are back to the Bungles. I think they're gonna be two and fourteen and uh it's Time to look at relocating because that team's just garbage. Sorry. <laughs> well, James Conner is still listed as active, so I think he's going to be playing. Um, I take the Steelers over the Bengals because I think they're just a better team. I think the Steelers are a better team than the Bengals. Yeah. And they're playing in Pittsburgh. I think Mason Rudolph is only going to get better. Um, yeah, and the defense is getting better. I mean, they picked up a good corner out of Miami. One of their only good players left. <laughs> and uh, I, th- I feel like if the, w- the worse that the Steelers do, the better Miami's draft pick gets. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Because <laughs> the Steelers traded that one draft. They traded their first round pick off for that corner. I don't even know what his name is. Mika Fitzpatrick. Yeah, there you go. And uh, I think that's going to pay off because I don't think that the Bengals are good enough to even look at the playoffs. Yeah. They can't, they can't, even, they can't even put it on their TV sets because it just <laughs> uh, See, But still, I think the Ravens are going to walk into the playoffs because the Steelers are beat up without Ben. The, I, I'm really hoping they can get 8-8, eight and eight, but I don't, I don't think they're going to make it. Okay, but I do think they'll beat the the Bengals. The Bengals are on par with the Dolphins, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in agreement with you. I'm taking Pittsburgh yeah. as well uh, at home on Monday Night Football because yes, they have a lot of issues, but so too do the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, P- Pittsburgh's fighting through those issues. I think this week will be the week they finally uh, mustered out a win. So Pittsburgh goes one and three through week four in my opinion so there we go that's that's our whole picks that's all our picks for week four um as always we appreciate i'm ghost rider for taking the time to be on the podcast and an extra shout out for being super supportive on the channel uh i feel like it's been like two or three years that you've, you've been, been on yeah yeah it's um, always been so thank you for the support i appreciate it thank uh, you for having me Absolutely. We'd like to have you back on a little bit later on in the season, too, if you're right. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm down. So with that, it's going to be Sarge, Chris, Ghost Rider, and myself checking up out of here. We will catch you next time. Peace out, bitches.